Hello everyone, I am Renzhou Tao from Columbia University. I will talk about our work for more verification of a multiprocessor hypervisor on ARM relaxed memory hardware. Concurrent systems like operating system and hypervisors form the backbone of safety critical systems. However, these systems are error prone and pose a significant security risk. One solution is formal verification which provides formal guarantees that the system is bug-free. Formal verification will prove that for a given implementation of the software, any behavior of it on a certain hardware model is captured by the software specification. The guarantee of formal verification depends on the specific hardware model. The verified system may still be buggy on different hardware. Unfortunately, all previously verified systems use simple hardware models that do not match modern multiprocessor hardware. For example, SL4, Commodo, and Servo are only verified on single processor hardware, and Certicos, AtomFS, and Mailboats are only verified on sequentially consistent multiprocessor hardware. However, this is not how real hardware behaves. Modern architectures like ARM, RISC V, and X86 support relaxed memory hardware. On relaxed memory hardware, none of the systems have any correctness guarantees. On SE hardware, the memory accesses behave as if the operations of all the CPUs were executed in some sequential order while preserving program order. In contrast, on relaxed memory hardware, CPUs are allowed to reorder memory access and execute out of program order. Consider the following example with two CPUs. CPU1 has register R0 and CPU2 has register R1. There are also two memory addresses X and Y. Initially, all memory and all registers have value 0. CPU1 first reads the value of x, saves it into R0, and then sets the value of y to 1. CPU2 first reads the value of y, saves it into R1, and then sets the value of x to R1. On SC hardware, one of R0 and R1 must be 0 after the execution, because the first executed instruction must be A or C. However, CPU1 may do an out-of-order execution on relaxed memory hardware, because these, the two instructions are independent. If the execution is B, C, D, A, R0 and R1 will be both 1. There are some cases where the program's behavior on SC is the same as behavior on RM. The data risk free theorem states that if a program is data risk free, its behavior on SC and on most relaxed memory hardware is the same. However, this theorem is not useful to verify systems because real systems are not fully DRF. For example, the lock implementation is inherently not DRF. And formally verifying software system on relaxed memory hardware is still an open problem. To address this problem, we propose VRM, a new framework for verifying concurrent system software on relaxed memory hardware. VRM focuses on verifying kernel codes such as OS kernels and hypervisors. We first, we first introduce weak DRF conditions, a set of synchronization and memory access conditions that are broadly applicable in system design. Then, we prove that if a system satisfies weak DRF conditions, its correctness on SC can be propagated to relaxed memory hardware. Finally, we demonstrate the effectiveness of our approach by verifying a Linux KVM hypervisor on ARM relaxed memory hardware. VRM introduced a set of six conditions called weak data risk free conditions and proves that under these conditions, the system verified on SC are still correct on relaxed memory hardware. The weak DRF conditions weaken the DRF condition by only ensuring that most of the kernel is data risk free, while having extra constraints for the three non data risk free parts of the system, namely lock implementations, page tables, and user programs. Due to the time limit, we will focus on the two conditions about page tables, and other conditions are described in the paper. The transactional page table condition states that shared page table rights must be transactional which means that any pageable work can only see the result before all pageable writes, the result after all pageable writes occur in program order or a page fault. This condition ensures that out-of-order pageable writes do not produce extra behavior on relaxed memory. Consider the following example. CPU1 is running the kernel which is updating a user's page table, and CPU2 is running a user program. CPU1 first unmaps the page directory X and then sets the page table entry Y, which is a leaf of X, to some page P1. Meanwhile, CPU2 accesses the virtual address Z mapped using X and Y. This piece of code is never data risk free, 
because the page tip work by C is issued by the MMU hardware, which can access the page table even if it's locked by another CPU. On SC hardware, CPU 2 cannot access the physical page P1, because either Y is still mapped to the old page P0, or X has been unmapped. However, on relaxed memory hardware, instruction B can be reordered before A because the two instructions are independent. If the page work of C happens to be before A but after B, the contents of page P1 will be mistakenly accessed. If we make the updates transactional by splitting them into two critical sections, the barrier inside the lock limitation can forbid the reordering between B and A, which prevents unexpected behavior. A wide range of page table updates are transactional, including modifying a single page table entry or setting empty page table entries in multiple levels of a multi-level page table. The right ones kernel mapping condition states that entries of the kernel's own page table can only be mapped once. This condition ensures that out-of-order page table reads cannot produce extra behaviors. Real systems often satisfy it by mapping all physical memory to the kernel page table at boot. We prove that for any system that satisfies the weak DRF conditions, for any pieces of kernel program P, any possible observable behavior of P on ARM relaxed memory hardware is also observable on SC hardware. By this theorem given a verified system on the SC hardware model, if we prove that the system satisfies the weak DRF conditions, we can know that the system is also correct on relaxed memory hardware. We use the promising ARM model, which has been proved to be equivalent to ARM's hardware as our former model for ARM relaxed memory hardware. Due to its complexity, it's hard to directly verify the correctness of the system using promising ARM. But we only use it to prove the software's equivalence on relaxed memory and on SC. Our goal is that given any execution trees on relaxed memory of a kernel program P with some user program Q, we can always find an execution on SC of P and some other program Q prime such that their results are the same. We prove this goal by induction on constructing the execution trees. The induction step is trivial. It suffices to show the base case. For any two memory access events, their behavior on Relax memory can also occur on SC. If the two events are by different CPUs and about different addresses, then their execution order does not matter and the behavior is always the same. If the two events are by different CPUs and about the same address, then by DRF kernel conditions, they must be inside some critical sections. And by no bare misuse conditions, there must be barriers inside the lock implementation so that there is no out of order re execution across critical sections. Then, the two events must occur in sequential order, and both cases exist on SC. If the two events are by the same CPU and about different addresses, then either they are independent and their order does not matter, or they are dependent, and hardware constraint guarantees that there is no out of order execution. If the two events are by the same CPU and about the same address, then by ARM hardware's coherent order constraint, there is no out of order execution in these two events. Finally, by transactional page table and sequential TLB invalidation constraint, we can prove that there is no extra behavior about page tables. For non-DRF user program, even if the user program Q primes, Q's behavior on SC is not the same as our relaxed memory, we can prove that there always exists a Q prime such that Q prime on SC produces the same memory state as Q on relaxed memory. To demonstrate the usefulness of our approach, we use VRM to verify a Linux KVM hypervisor, namely SKVM. SKVM is vanilla KVM with some changes that made it possible to verify the security guarantees of the entire hypervisor. In our previous work, we have already verified SKVM, but it was the only proof correct on SC hardware. In this work, we further proved that SKVM satisfies the six weak DRF conditions, with no changes to SKVM's code. Then, according to our main theorem, the security of SKVM proves the proof that SC still holds on ARM relaxed memory hardware. We formulate all the proof in the Cock proof assistant. You can see that the extra proof effort, including proving the correctness of VRM and proving that SEKVM satisfies the weak DRF conditions, is nearly an order of magnitude less than the original proof on SC. This shows the power of our framework that previous proof can be reused, saving huge efforts. We also measure the performance of SKVM versus a modified KVM to evaluate whether the changes to SKVM to make it possible to verify impact its performance on relaxed memory hardware. 
we run five application benchmarks using 1 to 32 concurrent virtual machines. As is shown in the graph, the x-axis is the number of virtual machines and the y-axis is the normalized performance compared with the original KVM. We can see that SQKVM has similar performance compared to unverified KVM on all benchmarks and all virtual machine numbers. In conclusion, we propose VRM, the first system verification framework on relaxed memory hardware. VRM introduces the weak DRF conditions that ensure that kernel code has the same behavior on sequentially consistent and relaxed memory hardware. We use VRM to extend the verification of SQKVM with modest additional proof effort. Our experiment shows that SQKVM has a similar performance to unmodified KVM. This is the first proof of commodity system software on relaxed memory hardware. That's all. Thank you.